crazy way of doing it, isn't it? It is. <laughs> What's this like, Jack it back? No, there's one there. Ah, uh, well. Yes, the, uh, yeah, some of the... Some of the... Some of the... Oh, well, I picked a good day for it. Yeah, you have been in here yet? Uh, oh, once before when uh, Tank showed me around. But, So this is where it all happens. Yep. So what's a, what what's going to happen today then, basically? I'll run and do a sea trials just to see, make sure she everything's going right. And because they had was it a problem with the exhaust manifold or something? Uh turbos were getting too hot. Right. So those pyros were getting way too high. So what we had to do was take some off the props, take some pitch off the props. Twice we've done it. Yep. So we've done it again. <laughs> Hopefully that'll fix it. Yeah. Yeah. What happens is when the engine's overloaded and they're turbocharged, puts the pyro exhaust temperature up real high. Right. So what we've basically done is changed, got the pitch changed on, they had to get over it to get that done. And we'll put them, we've put them back on and hopefully that'll bring the pyro down. Right. And it should be a lot better. So I suppose it's all to do with um, getting the engines to work at the optimal yeah. kind of speed and torque. And what does that basically do? Is that counteract the magnetic effect of the ship? Uh, that, that's that's what I have to do if it's if the compass is incorrect. Right. That means the magnetic field around the compass is interfering with the compass, and, right. I'll, have, and I'll have to correct the magnetic field. Yeah. Okay. I'm on board the Matthew Flinders Four, talking to Matthew Bales about his new ship. So, uh, how long have you been building these kind of ships, Matthew? Uh, we've been building these kind of ships for about 28 years now. Far too long. <laughs> and what really got you into it? Well, I bought the slipway at Bridport about 30 years, a bit over 30 years ago. And we lost quite a few boats to New Zealand the first two years, so we lost a lot of our maintenance work. So we had to find something else to do. And there was a shortage on new ships, and we um, we tried tried a hand at uh, a few different things and then um, the Flinders Island shipping came up so we put our hand up for that and that got us started into shipbuilding and then after that we've been building ever since tuna boats and cray boats and hmm. so this design this is a different design from the other Matthew Flinders but is it by the same architect or no different? no completely different architect completely different boat looks a bit the same that's about all we just um, this is the fourth one of these Fourth one? Yeah, fourth one of these we've done and each time we've improved them and they've got better and better and better, so right. hopefully this will be the best. So how would you say this is different from the others that we've had before? Uh, it's got a different water flow, a different shape underneath, a lot more displacement. Uh, it's got three engines, the other ones only had two engines. So, mm. Just things that we've learned over the years, mm. what we should do and what we shouldn't do. So what what would be the dimensions and weight of, of it now? This, yeah. Because it looks a lot taller than the other one. Um, it's the same as the Captain Bill and the same as the Condor. Oh, right. It's different yeah, to the Matthew yeah. Flinders because it's got an extra story on the wheelhouse. But um, all much the same. The 35, the length overall is 35 metres. Or 36 and a half metres, but the measured length is 35 metres. This one runs 12 metre boom. The other ones run a 10 metre boom. So it's and two metres wider. This weighs about 370 tonne. Hmm. About 35 tonne heavier than what the Matthew Flinders is. Right. And what would you say would be the main advantages of this design over your previous ones? Um, this this carries about 100 tonne more weight with the same amount of displacement, so it's going to be a bit easier on the river. Right. 
um, the quicker and the deck is a lot more user friendly in the fact that it's a bit wider and it suits containers better and suits trailers better than the um, Matthew Flinders. So you didn't have to make any alterations to the docking facilities at or Flinders or here? No, no, no. Oh. All the uh, infrastructure stays the same. But, mm. So, as well as freight, of course, you've got the facility for carrying passengers. What, what? How's that changed since the original Matthew Flinders? The original Flinders has got a license to carry 12 passengers under a commercial freight ship, where this one's actually a registered passenger ship and can carry up to 30 passengers. So it's got a dedicated lounge for passengers instead of. The way the Flinders have never really set up for passengers, it's, you know, it's never, mm. never really good enough. This one, um, like I said, we put a dedicated lounge in. They've got their own TVs and seats and mm. mess facilities. And yeah, it looked pretty mm. impressive down there. Mm. Hopefully, it works out well. It looked like you're in an air aeroplane when you get in there. Yeah, a rough aeroplane. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have one, mind, mind you. Planes have only gotten down too. <laughs> but so, how long is it kind of on a typical trip? I mean, obviously, weather makes a difference, but what would be a the, um, the Matthew, Matthew Flinders 3 is about eight and a half hours, mm -hmm. and this one should be around five and a half, six hours. Gee, that's a mm. fair difference, isn't it? Mm. So, so it's a bit, bit more user friendly for passengers, so. mm. but it's still not, no, Bass Strait's not a good place for little boats. No. Bank Strait's even worse, so. Yeah. Right? You're still a boat, so. Okay, so you, any other technical details about it? You said it's got three, what kind of motor? Um, the, diesels? The, K, the K19 marine diesels. They're 19 litre each. Um, they're IMO2 compliant for the latest rules and regulations. We're running um, two 100 kVA gensets and we've got two uh, 300 kilowatt bow thrusters. So there's seven, oh, so that's seven the, engines all up. So that's something new, the bow thrusters? Bow thrusters are new, yeah. The other one hasn't got them. Oh, yeah. so make oh the, Condor, the Condor did have and the I'm not sure. And Captain Bill had one too, I think. Yeah. This one's got two. So. Mm. Uh, was the what's the main advantage of having three props and three engines? Uh, we just want a bit more power. Yeah. And we can't have we can't run big diameter propellers. We've got to run smaller propellers. So right. well, get the service of... area. We've got to put an extra propeller in. Okay. Because our draft is so shallow and the river's shallow and Lady Baron's shallow and. Yeah. Mm. No. So it's really. Um... It's a shallow. It's a shallow draft vessel. So yeah. to get propulsion, you need extra. Are there, area. are there other, other ships like this elsewhere in Australia? Oh yeah, yeah, quite a few around. But most of them are rear landing, you know, door on the front of them, like oh, front right. landing barges. These are the only SLVs that the stern loading boats. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we've got, we've built four of these and there's another one that was built before Matthew Flinders back in uh, early 1990s. That works up in, well, what used to work at um, Surface Paradise, used to go out to Hope Hope, uh, Hope Harbour there and Cart Sand. Because so. initially there was a bit of opposition to the idea of a roll on, I mean before this. Yeah, there was plenty of opposition. A new shipping service takes over the island run in the next two months, but it's a journey into controversy. Rod Wallace reports. For 50 years, this has been the shape of the Flinders Island shipping service. Time has overtaken the romance and so has controversy. It's a classic example of bureaucratic theory and impractical politicians. The people of uh, Flinders Island po possibly have been sold short on this. And there's a lot of things that we don't know about. Shipping management, Flinders Islanders, even the man who designed the new boat, all with misgivings about the size and shape of the new service. The company running the one ship that serves the island now concedes it's outdated. But company leaders say in choosing its replacement, the government has bungled. Yeah, lift on, lift off sort of gone by the wayside with the, you know, obviously the, the row row set up. You know, whatever you can take down the road, you can take on the mm. ship. So it just opens up a whole new ball game as far as the um, island trade. Mm. I suppose one of the biggest differences was the fact that this is going to Lady Barron and not White Mark. That yeah, we, we, we chose Lady Baron in the initial early stages with the Matthew Flinders 3 and the fact that it was non-title. You know, Bridport's title, yeah. White Mark's title, we didn't want two title ports. No. So we opted to, to run out of Lady Baron to cut down the waiting time and what, bad, what, bad enough Bridport being title, we didn't yeah. want two title ports. And White Mark would be a lot more exposed than... Open to the westerlies, yeah, yeah. You're, you're more vulnerable to the weather. We're, 
Mm. But it works works real well at Lady Barron. So. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, it, I, I just I say I keep on saying to you, I can't believe a, a ship of this um, design and complexity has been built in a little place like Britport. So it's a real credit to you, because you must have got together a real good team of people. Oh, I've been very fortunate with the crew. Like we've always had real good people, real good staff, as well as good builders, like boat builders, crew. Mm. And it's a credit to the fellows who do it, you know, because like, I only oversee it, they do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, look, thanks, thanks, Matthew. That's a uh, yeah, good insight into the, into the boat, and I uh, wish you all the best in the future, although you've actually sold this boat, I believe. Not yet, but it's getting very close. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and will it still operate on the Flinders trip? Yep. Yeah, he, he told me he's going to leave it on the run, so he wants to run both of them. And, oh, yeah, right. So hopefully they'll, she'll, she'll be to and fro from Flinders to Bridport, so oh. it'll be good to see. Okay. Well, thanks again. He's swinging the compass. This is 263 and this yeah. is 282, yeah. 35. And it should be the same. 